This plot twist is unbelievably crazy, but undeniably versatile. Even if your campaign is in progress, there's a good chance you can work this in without having to retcon anything. Welcome to Deck of DM Things. My name is Cole Porter, and today I'll be sharing with you an awesome twist that you can work into your home campaign. I came up with this for one of my home games, and that being said, if you're in my dual lore campaign that started with a lot of bees, you cannot watch this. You are forbidden. So sorry, go home. Or watch something else. Doesn't matter. To make this plot twist doable, you really only need one thing, and that's a big bad evil person who's here to destroy your entire world. Or at least the world that the players are in. Now, this end goal might not be immediately clear to your players, because your big bad might be more visibly trying to enslave the world populace, awaken an ancient evil, set a plague amongst the living creatures of the land, or some other villainous ambition. And if that's the case, you can simply make those goals a means to an end, and that end being a complete physical destruction of the world that you're in, or at least complete eradication of all life within your world. So what's the twist? Well, it lies in your big bad evil person's true nature, backstory, and motivation. You see, your big bad is not from the world that your players know. They come from a different world that is ruled by an extremely powerful and extremely corrupt mage. And it's the source of this mage's power that sets the stage for our plot twist. In this other world that your big bad is from, this evil and corrupt mage discovered the power that they could harness from a pocket dimension. The mage started by trapping rats or other small animals in a crystal, and inside the crystals where the pocket dimension was, these creatures were stored. And he discovered that he could draw power from the creature's life force within the crystal and use that power to cast spells. So he used the power from these small creatures to expand this pocket dimension, which allowed him to entrap larger and larger, more complex creatures. The process continued. Eventually he began entrapping humanoids whose innate arcane power was much greater. As he made enemies, he started entrapping these enemies into this crystal, but he didn't want them to die in there. So he started to make his pocket dimension habitable. He essentially started creating a world within this gym that these people and creatures that he placed in there could live in, could reproduce in, essentially making this power renewable within the gym. As the population of this gym grew, this mage started to enchant it so that everyone in there had new memories and forgot where they had come from. Eventually an entire world was created where no one knew they were in a prison dimension. And eventually he had so much power that he could not even be rivaled by the gods. And he ruled over the entire world using this crystal with a massive pocket dimension world within it. Now you might be thinking, how does this relate to our big bad evil guy and the plot twist of our campaign? Well, your big bad, being from the world that we're describing now, wanted to stop this evil mage, but knew that they could not confront them face to face one on one. Even with an army, your big bad would have no chance of stopping this mage. So they decided to surrender themselves to the mage to be placed into the pocket dimension with a goal of destroying it from within. You see where I'm going with this? Your big bad was smart and figured that the process would wipe their memories. So they enchanted themselves to preserve their memories. And when they did eventually arrive within this prison dimension, the world that your campaign takes place in, they were intent on destroying this world in order to destroy the gym. And there is your twist. Your big bad evil person is, in a different sense, a brave hero from another world going to desperate lengths to defeat their big bad evil guy. And in order to defeat that big bad evil guy, they have to destroy the world that you've created, the world that your players are in. But your players, hopefully, love and care for. There are endless possibilities that come from this. Your big bad could reveal this information to a select few, essentially starting a cult. The cult could have a creepy catchphrase like, we must destroy the lesser world to free the greater one, or something like that. This also gives you license to create some kind of ticking time bomb. Perhaps your big bad is trying to enchant a volcano to erupt and split the earth in half. Or maybe he's trying to amass an army of mages to simply burn all life off the surface of your world. Because if you think about it, the elimination of all life would achieve a similar goal. Now, to be clear, these are all just suggestions, and I encourage you to take away from this whatever you want and make it fit your campaign in whatever way you see fit. And of course, having a world that exists entirely within a pocket dimension raises some very big questions. For example, if you have a cleric or a paladin or someone else who prays to a god, do those gods really exist or are they just puppets of this great evil mage who controls the world itself? Does this prevent players from using pocket dimensions? like the Bag of Holding. And it also raises perhaps the most important question of them all, what if your big bad succeeds? Or what if your players help them in the end? What implications does this have 
If the gym is broken, does it spew the entire world that you've created out into the world above? To me, that sounds like a great start and great setting for a post-apocalyptic land that was destroyed by such a rupture. But ultimately, it's up to you. What do you think? What would you change? What would you add? What would you subtract? If you watched this far and enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. I'll be doing content like this about every week. Ring the bell if you want to stay in the loop. And if you want to learn five ways to speed up combat in your campaign and at your sessions, I'm going to watch this video next. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have an excellent day.